Hey guys, welcome. Here we are. We took two weeks off. We did. <laughs> and we really did. And now we're back. Or we're going, right? <laughs> yeah, we are. We are. We're yeah, because the clock has started. Look at so that. legally we're recording. Okay, so we've got a big surprise for you guys today. <laughs> Guess what? It's one of our literal top favorites. Literally. Beth Stelling. Thank you. That's very nice of you to say. You're so funny. I am honored. Thank you, you are so, so goddamn funny. funny. And, and it is fucked truly. up. Thank you. Yeah. You did a pedophile bit when we did um, Chatterbox, <laughs> <laughs> and that song sang is within the first minute. Of the, but when we did Chatterbox, like I think it was like a year ago or something, you did this pedophile bit, and it made me cry. I was laughing so hard. <laughs> That's my favorite pedophile bit. For you guys, Thank if you, you don't know Beth, go fucking follow her. Go find her. She's so fucking funny. Thank Do you. Ladies. Are you doing Netflix as a joke? Yes. Uh, yes. We were talking about it on the way here about how we're like the only ones who aren't doing it. The only reason I'm doing it is because somebody put me on their show. Good. But As you should be. No, so don't worry, because you are doing it, so don't worry. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah, now it's no, just this is you. This classic so now Gabby you're... always trying to take my moment. Like, no, I'm not doing it. I'm so she goes, she's like, I'm just doing this like big theater, like whatever. I'm like, okay, it I'm, must I'm be opening, hard. I'm opening. It's, you know. Yeah, yeah. The good news is you could be added at any moment in any storefront pizza shop. So they true. just put like a little Netflix as a joke box at the front of it, and, and then true. all of a sudden you're on. And none of it really fucking matters. There's, There's you... a little Netflix as a joke sticker right outside the methadone clinic of my apartment. So <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna try and get a spot yeah, there. Yeah, you're Oh yeah, uh, you're already doing my little time. Is it my doctor's office? It is. Yeah, yeah it is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, my doctor's office is next to a methadone clinic. But where are you That's... doing it? The Hollywood Forever Cemetery oh, this Friday at so seven. Fun. Wait, the, this May Friday? 3rd. Yeah. Is it like a Beth Stelling and Friends? I'm just gonna do my hour. I have two. Um, my friend Alana Johnston is is gonna pump up the crowd, and then a uh, younger comic I met recently, Ellen Harold, asked to do some time. So cute. I shouldn't have phrased it like that. <laughs> She's doing time. She's doing time. She's doing time. She is Ellen on the show. It doesn't matter so how sorry. she got there, yeah. but she's on. You're like, yeah, this that sounded bad. She I was really begging on her like knees. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. just meant like, yeah. she she was like, hey, if you're doing these shows, I will. And I said, of course. Like, yeah. you know, I, I would if I didn't think she was funny, I wouldn't put her on my show. No, said, totally. Fuck I would have said, Ellen, I'm going to be telling a podcast that you asked. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you're doing an hour. Are they filming it? Um, they aren't. I think there's like, no, no, they're not. I'm gonna film it. I f have a new hour, and I'd like to try to sell it. That's awesome. Did you have a Netflix special? Yeah, you have a you Netflix do, right? special and yes. an HBO special. That's right. So if you want to check me out, it would be specials. literally. It would be if you didn't want me then is the Netflix special that came out in October of 23, and then I have an HBO special call, and it's on Max called Girl Daddy. I also have a half hour on Netflix. Okay, because okay, so literally, and that's on Workhorse, sweetie. <laughs> no, it really no, is. I have no, I mean, there's people who put out like an hour a year. It doesn't mean they're good, but you know, there's true. people doing more And that is true. An hour a year is so fucking crazy. Well, it became like, I, I think it was definitely part of a, like UK comics do that because the fringe is yearly. And I think they're almost sort of like, they say the topic before they even write the show. And mm -hmm. that's part of, um, I don't know. It definitely requires work ethic, but I think it's definitely part of, uh, that scene yeah it's mm -hmm. I, if anything maybe so do we blame louis i think he may have started the hour a year thing i think so i don't know Was i'm just throwing that out there bill burr possibly Wait, i don't know hours it's like yeah. dude, a year goes by so fucking fast and oh definitely that much there should be no pressure to be putting out I, I i like to say um even though it's cheesy uh you should it's called a special because it should be special so mm -hmm. put it out when it's yeah. ready and special Mm -hmm. I love yeah. that. Mm -hmm. But also, that doesn't make you successful. <laughs> and that is true. That is true. Content, they all want it, and it's never coming fast enough. I know, and it never fucking is. And then it's like, all yeah, all of this. But this shit. helps. You have a podcast. Yeah, you it's cute. Talk, you get some clips. Are you still doing the podcast you have with your mom? We uh, were canceled. Uh, we were told moms, people don't have interest in them. Do they know? Uh, you had yeah. a podcast with your mom? Mm -hmm. I didn't know that. It's still out there. It was fun. Yeah. Me and my mom would basically call my friend's moms and interview them what it was like to raise a funny kid that went on to become a comedian. I like that premise. Thank you. Yeah, but I mean, we had some great a fuck about moms. Yeah, people don't care They're about like, moms. No. <laughs> um, Wholesome, no. So many great moms. Uh, the stand There were some standouts, of course. Sam Richardson's mom's from Ghana, and she said, the, I mean, she's absolutely in love with him, and it's the cutest okay. thing to hear her talk about him. Uh, Do you like your mom? 
Do I like mine? Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I mean, they're doing a, a podcast good... together. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah. We get along. I I will say it's dangerous. Um, kind of a red flag when someone's in the same realm as my manager is my best friend. Mm -hmm. uh, my agree. mom is my best friend is a bit of a red flag. Uh, yeah. yeah. But of course, I love my mom so much, and I do talk to her often, yeah. and I appreciate her opinion. I think over the years, I've learned to have boundaries because you don't need to be like it's like doing an open mic for all dude comics yeah like mm -hmm. i don't care what you think so why would i be here like don't ask your mom about anal you know stuff like don't that. ask your mom that's about so anal. true yeah like there's boundaries and there's you don't want the answer and you knew that so why would you ask her that yeah that's very don't, true. you don't need to know that from your mom i don't want to know i don't even want to know that my mom had sex with my dad <laughs> like it's it's just so i can't yeah the, the mom is your best friend is I have always felt like it's kind of a red flag. Yeah, yeah. And it's, Again, I appreciate moms. It's cute that you are close with my I'm close with my mom. Mm -hmm. I just think, you know, perhaps boundary wise. And yeah. who knows what you guys have been through. Maybe and she had true. you at 16 and now you guys are like buds and drinking together. It's true. It's true. Every every situation is yeah. so different. But yeah, in my in my like narrow view of the world. But we're I'm also like, probably just jealous because our moms were kind of like create like crafted out of the depths of hell. Yeah, I'm just that's like hard. Yeah, my that's mom is from hell. We kind of crawled out of our mother's version of of having a mom and it, yeah, it, it totally affects you. It is. I mean, I whatever. I've always ha taken issue with the phrase, you know, mommy issue, daddy issue. It's like we all everybody's We've all got, got them. I think we're all bought in that way where yeah. we have them all. Like right now, <laughs> honestly, so I'm true. kind of relating more with having daddy issues, which is I've always been a mommy issue gal. So now I'm like, okay, rebranding. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So the world's not ready. Yeah. And that's Look why I'm not that. in Netflix as a joke. Because they said, yeah, we don't know exactly. where to place you. They don't even we know don't where to know. We don't right know. Right and I said, honey, let me just stay over here. So. <laughs> I don't get why they film some of them and then don't film some of them what's the fucking well i mean i think it, it depends contracts? on probably popularity and yeah. money i think they have no interest in filming mine are they gonna do you know no i don't actually know if you would know do you think they're gonna film matt rife's hmm in fact that's sort of ringing a bell in the sense that didn't they say they maybe were i feel like i saw that somewhere on the internet i think they that are he would, yeah. that he would be filming his special at netflix okay okay I feel yeah like i he mean films everything it's anyway, kind of so. hard I, I realize how sometimes little my comedy worldview is but like some of these people selling out arenas i'm just like oh wow i mean we were at a bar show together it, right but it's interesting so wild. Yeah. i'm in awe that you could sell out the kia forum it's wild with what you do <laughs> i mean <laughs> I'm okay. and good for you yeah, with and what good you for do you. I, look i get i'm niche out. or uh unlikable mm -hmm. i don't know what to say i don't know yeah i don't, I don't know what do you it would think feel like. you think you're unlikable i don't know yeah i think like i think it's a battle because you do want to be available or you want to be accessible to a lot of people, yeah. but maybe not all. And there are That's times so where you leave a place and if it doesn't work out for you that well, I remember running Girl Daddy in Raleigh, North Carolina at Good Nights and it's Valentine's Day weekend. And it seems like maybe you guys are a little familiar with it or rec remember some of the realm of the material. Yeah. So if you, and I say that to say, maybe you can relate to how that may have gone in the South on Valentine's Day. I was raised in North Carolina, so I can, yeah. I didn't do stand up there, but I can, and I it get was the a, vibe. Yeah, it was a vibe. And, yeah. it, and, and it didn't knock me off my axis. I just thought that doesn't work here well. I don't change anything about myself. And it's not like I'm stubborn. And it's like, this isn't really for you, That's I suppose. So interesting though, because isn't it your fans? Well, yes, yes, but also to some extent, yeah. But there is also like it's it is can comedy clubs can be an estuary of uh, let's go see comedy tonight, right? Because you have right, to remember, right. there's nothing around except for a fucking cookout, especially in North Carolina, yeah. and then like I don't know, like a back porch where you fuck your uncle, and then. <laughs> And at not high school in all in places, church. but in most. And then, uh -huh. um, and then, and then a comedy club. And you yeah. go, well, uncle's busy tonight. Just had cookout three times today. Let's go see what Miss Beth has to say. Yeah. And you go, oh, I, I know didn't know you were going like to be talking that. about your yeah. dad like that around right. something. Yeah. Like, oh. uh, yeah. abortion or assault or whatever right. it is. Right. And, and they've all cute. had them, but they don't want to hear about it because they. Yeah, have and to. it's Valentine's Day. And it's Valentine's so, Day. So when other like when else are you going to talk about this stuff? Yeah, it's a perfect time. Yeah. So okay. But that so yeah, it wasn't necessarily. Um, a wake up call it was just more like I didn't like that I didn't love it and mm -hmm. then I remember the following I will say the thing that made me feel even better was um, Bobcat Goldthwait was there the following weekend and there, a huge like um, race related fight broke out in the audience Shut. and it kind of made me just go yeah I mean those aren't my people it doesn't mean yeah. I can't go and try to speak to them and try to make them laugh and yeah. like I'm not here to 
educate you or something. I'm, I'm giving you a different perspective, which is the beauty of stand up. Just like if mm -hmm. someone saw me and I, I've had this said to me before about, well, t two things people const either constantly think I'm a lesbian or c have called me heteronormative. And it's like heteronormative basically is, means I'm essentially promoting the hetero lifestyle, which uh -huh. If you, anything, I'm a cautionary so tale. But also, if telling. anyone <laughs> listens to even 10 minutes of your stand-up, you know what? I'll say five. They would Wait. know that that's not but what that's you're doing. a two-minute clip. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 But you that's the thing. If anything, it's like, it's like okay, I'm either heteronormative or yeah. I'm man-hating. You think I'm gay or I'm... So yeah. it, but don't does, you feel like that's what they say? Oh, sorry. I just cut you No, off. please. Uh, but I'm just saying, don't you feel like that's like what they say when like a woman is just having a provocative take on society? Right. That's the thing. I'm trying to yeah. make you think differently. It doesn't mean you have to agree with me. As, uh, the... What I'm doing is trying to surprise you, which is yeah. a joke. Yeah. So I am trying to Witchcraft. tell you a joke, which will make you laugh. Like, I'm not here to like, <laughs> you must leave here with a different perspective, but I know it can work and has beautifully worked because I've also been in Indianapolis. I did the um, helium there. Uh, it was that same special right before or after around the time I was going to film. This guy comes up with his son. He's like, he's about to head off to college. I wanted to come and bring him to see you. That was awesome. I think you like really kind of taught him a lot. Oh, I love that. That's really cool. And they really laughed cool. and had a good time. They bought a hat. The girl after him was love like, that. I need this. I had a girl that he had at the time. The joke is essentially I've been called a female comic so many times. If I ever have kids, I'm going to make them call me girl daddy. Mm -hmm. That was the joke. And this girl was like, and I'm buying this hat to wear to my abortion. She brought out this wad of cash that the guy had given her. Stop. And so like that's that though. Fans that's the people who I would it. love to have come to me. But also it's when I look at my audience, because I actually Mo and I are starting a podcast together, Mo Welch and I, mm -hmm. and it comes out tomorrow, actually. Oh, cool. And they ask you, like, what is your audience? And What's I, the podcast name? It's called Sweethearts, Sweethearts. Okay. with, with Beth Stallion Mo Welch. But like they ask you what your audience is. And similarly, I'm sure when you guys first started, people were like, well, what's your style? What's your thing? And you're like, I don't, I personally never I still knew how to know. answer that. Yeah. yeah. And I still struggle to answer it, but I never really know, knew my audience. Yeah. But if I look, they showed me how to, I sound so old. They showed me how to find it on my Instagram and it's a split. Is it really? Yeah. It's like 50, 50. Really? Yeah, Men and women. Like, yeah. 4852. I'm I'm more geared towards I think more of my audience is women. Mm -hmm. But like you yeah. never know. I'm just I just think it's one of those things where it's like I'm not meant for just one type of crowd. Right. But to the point of am I selling out the key of form? Well, I the last thing you want to be is bitter. Like mm -hmm. I'm not bitter. I'm not selling out the key of form. Maybe it's because I don't think big. Maybe it's because I didn't I don't have a PR team. I right. pay, like there are comics that pay upwards six grand a month for PR. Right. Um even when I had HBO, Max, and Team Coco produce that special, mm -hmm. um, they still thought maybe I should hire a PR company. And in my mind, I'm going, hell no. Right. Yes. What do you mean? Okay, very much six vocals. grand yeah. a month. Yeah. Like that is unfathomable. I moved here with $1,200 in a Mercury Sable. So it's sort of like, I'm not, I can't be falling for that. So if I'm not going to pay yeah. to play, yeah. is that it? I haven't That's figured out the too. algorithm. It, right. I, I don't know the answers, but the truth is it's like the last thing I want to be is bitter mm -hmm. because I'm not. I enjoy my job. All I want is for it to be easy to post my dates and have people come right. who will enjoy it, maybe bring new people who will enjoy it. I'm here yeah. to make you laugh. I'm not like, you know, ideally I would love to shift perspectives or just make you think of it in a new way, which is that's the beauty of comedy. Mm -hmm. You don't have to change, but with everybody saying like, Fe like there are a lot of white dude headliners that are feeling like their weekends are drying up. And I promise you, if you look at all the schedules on club weekends, they're fine. hundred percent. But it's like, you don't have to go and put yourself in my, sh in that comics shoes and feel it and live it. Right. You can just go and take a trip. Like TV gives you that. Trip. Absolutely. Right. Yeah. So just take that trip into my world. Right. Anyway, I think I got, went off on many tangents here, but it was along the lines of calling me heteronormative. It's like, well, I'm never going to write a joke about me being gay because wouldn't that be more problematic? Right. I mean, I can't write jokes about things I haven't lived. Yeah. I'm just telling you how, what my perspective is in my life. That's right. the best right. you can do is offer yourself in a authentic, honest way. Mm -hmm. It's, it's interesting how we like, we started off in this career being like, I just want to be a fucking comedian and tell stupid fucking jokes. And then it's like, becomes that thing where then you have to figure out how to like be a business person mm -hmm. and like, it can't, PR yes. and it becomes this whole other thing. And you're like, you wear some so people many are very hats. good yeah. business people. Absolutely. Yeah. I am not one of those. Right. I mean, I'm not either. Yeah. And and I think to some extent I don't want to be. Yeah. Um, 
again, I, I keep on saying the bitter thing because it's like you can be um, shocked and in awe of other people's success without being bitter. You can look at someone and say, I can't believe they got that and not feel angry at them. But you can look at it and say, OK, well, maybe that could happen for me or here's why that's not happening for me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're allowed to look around just like when you're in a relationship with someone, you love them, you're in love with them, yeah. but you're going to see somebody else hot out there. And go, oh, that looks like, hmm. yeah. yeah. And I wonder what that's about. <laughs> it's, it, dude, it's so hard in this career, not comparing yourself to people it who is. have what you want and being like, why don't I have that? Like, how do I get that? What, it is how hard. How does that happen? Yeah. And I think the ultimate, you know, things I've learned from people I love, you know, like Sarah Silverman will always say like, it's a marathon, not a race. Right. Yeah, and it's really a sprint. Yeah, and it's really yeah. yeah. And like, cause you know, I would love to be able to be making people laugh and touring as long as I can. Yeah. Um. Yeah. And essentially it really is like, I keep on saying the Kia form for some reason. I don't even know where the fuck that is. Because <laughs> you saw someone headlighting there and you said, honey, that's, and that's wild. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. And you said, unforgettable. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm go but the truth is, and maybe it is my fear of expansion, because like times I have put myself out there in ways I have been hurt. Because when you open the window, you you're letting sunshine and fresh air in, and you're also letting birds and bugs and bottles and cuss words and terrible yeah. things play in. And if you right. shut the window, you're shutting it to all of those yeah. things too. Mm -hmm. So I guess all that to say, I feel most comfortable in smaller rooms. I feel myself. I feel safe to be myself. Yeah. So like, I don't really yearn for the arena. Right. I've, I'm thankful I've gotten to open for people in them to feel that it yeah. makes me nervous. You know, I did, I did a couple dates with Mulaney on that on, it was from scratch and then it was turned into the last Netflix special, which was Baby J. Is that what it was? He, I forget what he called it. Baby yeah. J. You opened I for think him it's Baby while J. he was recording that special? Uh, just the so on that tour, yeah. which was Arena's. Wow. And it's like tr Arenas also true that crazy. his stuff. Yeah, it was. Crazy. And that's the thing from that. I actually got new fans. Yeah. So that is when you start to go, OK. Yeah. So I can have when someone like him or people I've opened for in the past, Burbaglia, Sarah Silverman. When they share their fan base with you, it is a gift. Yeah. Totally. You know, it's Absolutely. like, oh, wow, because some of these people might also like me. It's like that yeah. little suggestion, but in real life. Yeah. And it does make you go, oh, well, what if I was just shown to the people who would like me? Right. Is that the key? Right. I don't know how to do that other than I just keep touring and right. post when I'm in your city. And then you ask me when I'm in your city and I was just there. And you start to collect yeah. little. <laughs> it's like yeah. drops in a bucket. Yeah, mm -hmm. it is. It um, is. And then sometimes things are a big or poor and those change over time. It used to be Conan. And, and then eventually that kind of, I don't want to say meant nothing because it is an honor, mm -hmm. obviously, but it's in not the realm same of as ticket when it sales wasn't... or translation. Yeah. Yeah. Right. To that. Yeah. It is. That's, it's so fucking crazy because like getting Conan would be like, would be such a landmark in a career, but like it doesn't do as much as like going viral on TikTok does. Sure. Which yeah. is so crazy. Yeah. And then you don't, you know, of course there is sometimes that comic beef that even, I don't want to say it started with Vine, but that's the in initial time I remember it. You know, comics sort of being like, oh, he's a Vine guy or she's yeah. a Vine girl. Yeah. yeah. And I get the, uh, a bit of disdain because it's a, it's a totally different format. Mm -hmm. And of course I think a lot of those were very funny. Um, there's a difference between TikTok and those jokes and coming to for me to talk to you 100%, and yeah. make me my talking to you for one hour feel like, was that it? Oh my God, that was so fun. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. let's go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I talked to you, like that is something that comes with time and experience and and is hard. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially when you have to rebuild your new hour. Like it yeah. totally depends on when you see a comic. Are you seeing them right before they're going to film? Right. Well, enjoy the fucking ride because it rules. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or are you seeing them after they film and they're like, oh, yeah, you got nothing. Yeah. Just, yeah. <laughs> Running on fumes. Yeah. Like, okay. And we're building from the ground. I have right. nothing. Yeah. Right. Or I, I remember Bargatze, um had a so good approach funny. on that, which was, this was back after our half hours. Whoops. Sorry. Um, I blew it. <laughs> I blew on it for some reason. <laughs> just want to give it a little kiss. Yeah. <laughs> um, he basically just told the crowd, I don't know if he's still doing this, but because he's in arenas now, which was just, I'm going to go as long as I can with new and then I'll do the old because yeah. I'm rebuilding. And of course, they love it. Yeah. And, we, and at that point, it's like your whole fan base. So they're yeah. going to fucking love what you're doing. Yeah. Sorry. I just talked about comedy for like 10 minutes. No, straight. I love it. I honestly, I fucking love it. And yeah. also, I yeah. really look up to you as a hey, comedian. I'm honored. Yeah. I, I think that's a, sorry. I didn't mean to cut you no, off. No, no, you got that. I think enough. that's okay. new for me. I, 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 I just the, um, understanding of that yeah because mm -hmm. i because i am a little sister and i feel that kid sister um 
mindset yeah even on on the jobs i'm working on when i come in and i do punch up on a movie i'm like yeah here to help and i'm just hanging you know like versus like a senior in high school right you know, i was sure, a freshman for a long time and when you started comedy i'm sure that you had like like your elder like people yeah. that you looked up to who right. were like i want to be like or i want a career like that and it feels like that you're like a couple of classes above ours you know what i yeah. mean so it's like you're one of those people that you definitely look but that's to. hard for me to even like i've only right. been understanding that more lately mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that maybe when i come into a green room i actually have to look people and be like hi yeah otherwise like people you're think, that guy uh, now. but but why would i do that right right because you why still have that, that mindset of like yeah. i'm still not shit right yeah so and i think that's interesting that that of course we all know like ego maniacal comics that are mm -hmm. like you're welcome i'm here mm -hmm. yeah and then you have the other there's tons of in between but then you have the other i'm shit uh sort yeah. of comic and because of that interestingly enough i think a lot of them don't grasp how much power they have in yeah. our society yeah it's like i'm just a comic it's just a joke it's like yeah you have millions of people listening to you yeah mm -hmm. and it matters yeah because it's so great you do forget about it's like you forget about that yeah. with social media too that you're like speaking to so many people yeah so if you came up and you were like kind of nobody for a long time and then all of a sudden you got a big audience it's like there is a responsibility there yeah it's completely it's so that is so it's such a mind fuck it feels like it's almost the same thing as like somebody who loses a lot of weight that like doesn't feel comfortable like being in a new skinny body you yes. know what i mean and they're like they're still not like comfortable they're like what totally. no i don't i still identify like with this like former body mm -hmm. and they're not yeah. used to yeah and so that's why i'm just sort of like i i i know it's, it's whatever cheesy but it's like i am honored that you guys look up to me i, I am it's really nice and yeah you. how long have you been doing comedy 17 years 17 wow yeah 17. when did you feel like how far in were you when you were like, okay, I know who the fuck I am, and I always credit mom the meltdown. Do you guys were you ever around for Meltdown Comic Book Store? Yeah. yeah. So Meltdown was beginning. like a Wednesday, very popular show in L.A. run by uh, Jonah Ray and Kumail Nanjiani and Emily Gordon. And to get on that was like a big deal, mm -hmm. and you got a poster, and yeah, that Dave um, drew, and like. I would say like that was my early years here, like just really wanted to get on that. And I would have been four years into comedy when I moved to LA. And then I want to say two, one or two years into living here, I got to do an evening with Beth Stelling at Meltdown, which was the next sort of- Wow, um, okay. Next sort of, uh, I guess, what am I trying to say? Um, programming that they were doing. So you were like Danielle, six years into stand up at that point. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, and, and I remember probably Steve Hernandez came out to that. And he was always like a nice, well, I have funny tales with him, but mm -hmm. he, he was, he did make me sort of, he gave me confidence. He was sort of gassed me up. Yeah. And I don't know if it's because he like knew I needed it or whatever. I think maybe at first he didn't think, he was surprised that I would need it. Yeah. But, I just bring him, he comes to mind because I remember him giving me confidence then that, that, that was, that it was a really, cause it's like, that's a long time to do in LA when you're used to doing 12 minute sets. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it I think is, I did yeah. 45 or an hour or something like that. So, yeah, if I'm long. remembering correctly, I still have my little poster framed and everything. Yeah. But um, anyway, sorry, that was a really circuitous way of saying uh, probably about six years in is when I was like, that felt like closer to me. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. who I am. Yeah. And this last weekend, I was in Madison at Comedy on State, which is a, a great club um, in Wisconsin, one of, like one of my favorite clubs in the country. And one of my best friends, Michael, lives there. And he was like, this hour is like, sorry, <clears throat> I, I feel like I've been sick for like a month and a half. And mm -hmm. I, was really so, I was sick for like a fucking month. It yeah. was a nightmare. Mm -hmm. um, he was saying after watching my hour in Madison, he was like, it's so fun because I feel like this hour is more physical. He's like, and you're louder. Like sometimes you're like screaming. He was like, and I just feel like it's closest to who you are. Like when I'm hanging with you. Yeah. So 17 years. 17 years. Beautiful. <laughs> Beautiful. Which is crazy because like 17 years also is, I feel like that is the time when shit, when you really like break into being like a big comic. So I feel like it's the same right now. Like Steph Tollov has probably been doing it a, the same amount of time. Morgan J. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know? I don't know their numbers, but possible. I think it's around the... Oh, yeah. 
Thanks, same. Buddy. Thank you. Same fucking Thanks, time. Mark. Thanks, Mark, for the water. The gentleman. Um, okay. Yeah, dude. I just hit not. I'm like hitting nine in next month, and I'm like, wow, that's actually kind of ugly. Because I thought I would be <laughs> better than I am now, but it's also I don't know. I'm like maybe. I don't know. I don't know what I'm expecting. I can relate to the feeling. It's like wanting to grow up as a kid and you'll look back. Yeah. I don't know. I wanted to grow up and then I'm just like, you can't undo it. And yeah. <laughs> there's there's so many ups and downs. Yeah. Feelings ebb and flow. You'll want to quit. There are times where I absolutely would have wanted to quit. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and then there were scary times where I was like, what am I without this? Right. That's how I, yeah. Excuse me. I feel like both of those things at the same time all the time where I'm like, I don't know what I'm doing, but what, like, is what it else is doing there? to my psyche? Yeah. Okay. Is this healthy? This. Yeah. I, I think about this all the time. On, <clears> just <throat> this weekend, um, I like kind of like broke down to, uh, Gabby and I was just like, I don't know if I'm supposed to be a comic but i don't really like know what else i'm supposed to do and i yeah. just but then like then like the next week will come and i'm like no i love stand-up and i feel confident in this but it's such a mind fuck yeah and i feel like it's it like so eats hard. away at my spirit sometimes but yeah. then at the same time like i love the friends and the people i've been able to meet doing this and the experiences that yeah. i have so yeah and it's so fun it's, and then at the end of the day it's so fun like funny so people fun. are so fun it's of like course. an interesting career it's funny to be able it's like fun to be able to get on stage and kind of fuck off and like say whatever you want yeah and, and i mean and i it took me so long to not like really be prepared as much yeah mm. like i wouldn't i'm not the person who m typed up and memorized a monologue yeah. i'm not saying that's bad if people do that yeah i definitely started that way i started that way too i had like yeah. sheets and sheets of paragraphs and yeah. i would need to know the word by yeah. word yeah oh my but God. it takes a long time to to be able to like be interrupted or have something interrupt you or something yeah. come to your mind or flow and it's so hard then there's a whole, whole other things that are presented to you like uh are all those old jokes dead to me the answer is kind of yes right that's the thing too when but you start outgrowing the answer is no <laughs> yeah <laughs> you should bring uh, outgrow yes yeah but why dead uh, like that's the other part of the new hour every year that's like yeah. i have hours of material i could pull from i mean i don't want to get you never want to be the comic that's like stuck saying the same thing every freaking time right mm -hmm. but also you want to be somebody who if people are watching and you kind of are able to see that they're watching like kill it yeah and show up and be reliable yeah. so it's like it is a it's hard to navigate sometimes because you want to grow you want to write new right you want to be in the moment you want to be like you also want to kill every time right and you want to impress your peers yeah. okay yeah, yeah. you want to be reliable you want to be bookable so yeah. yeah i mean even this weekend i'm surrounded by like some of my best friends and at literally truly one of the best clubs in the country and i'm, I'm not saying i had there was a time where i like couldn't get out of bed or i was so sad but like i get low yeah and have to get up for it. i mean Talking for two hours a night, it doesn't seem like much, but you're thinking about it most of the day. Yeah. It's a lot. Like, yeah. to keep people's attention. I, I I, will say Saturday late, and I felt it, so it was fine. Where were you? Madison. Wisconsin. Oh, you were in Madison. Okay. Over last weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I ended it at like 45 or 50. Normally, I just do the full hour. I mean, you, you only need to do 45. Right. And of course, early days of headlining, I was like, I would have my eye on the clock at yeah. like 44, 59. Good night. Yeah. <laughs> you know, because you never wanted to be the comic. Everybody loves to like gossip and be like, she couldn't even do 30. And yeah. like, I would hear that a lot about people as I was coming up. So I was like, I'm, you have to, you're supposed to do 45 yeah. as a uh -huh. headliner. Mm -hmm. Anyway, I do an hour, but all that to say, Saturday, my last show of the weekend, I was really tired. It's a 10 p.m. show. I'm going to start actually seeing if I can do a five and a seven or a six and a nine or something. Anyway, but it's a late show. And I was just sort of like, I think we, I looked at them and I, ended it this one chunk and they laughed and I was like I think we're good right mm -hmm. and they were like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah I was like let's get out of here right yeah I mean yes I could have told, told them like my final story but I didn't want to and it takes so much of my energy and it's right. long yeah and so I was like let's get out of here yeah That's so funny. We're all on this and I felt like I delivered what they needed like yeah. sometimes I'll if I cut it short still the contractually amount of time yeah obligated amount of time I feel guilty later or something yeah but Anyway, e we have a lot of people who do struggle with mental illness in our realm uh, or in our business. Every, and, it's like yeah. Everybody. yeah, and it's not really that much of a wonder. I mean, yeah. what, doing the same thing to different results is, is the definition of insanity. Yeah. 
you know. God, that's so true. That's literally I can do that do. from in the same night, minutes apart from the main room to the lab, mm-hmm. and that's just something I wouldn't recommend for your health. Yeah, yeah. going into the lab. And we're spending so, and honestly, <laughs> it's actually worst place in LA. Um, and it's like we spend so much time thinking about ourselves too. Well, that's the other thing. I mean, I had a comic reach out to me for help, and. I was like, I promise you, it's your feed. It's just what you're seeing in your phone because I don't even know what you're talking about. Yeah, really. Yeah, like, we have don't to control- reply to Twitter. Don't like because then nobody will see it. Like I've had people say stuff to me that was like either co- trying to say that I had been problematic in some way or whatever. Like that's the thing about comics. You know, you're getting your cold or the Jerry Seinfeld quote. I'm sure. I'm assuming he's been taking out of context because I haven't read the full article, so I don't even need to comment on it. But the point is, like, I guess Jerry's lately getting his quote about like. It, being woke has ruined comedy i'm like okay. being anti-woke if anything to me has ruined comedy uh-huh. everybody's Jerry's just, saying that yeah okay. again i don't want to get yeah. into it because i haven't yeah, read yeah. the full article but yeah. what they pulled from was along the lines of something he said years ago about colleges that got blown out of proportion okay okay i'm not a seinfeld like lover or hater i, mm-hmm. I watched it as a kid but yeah neutral. um all that to say there's these quotes going around saying like uh, wokeness has ruined yeah. modern comedy. And to me, I would say anti-wokeness has. Uh-huh. I mean, I, I'm a, a flaming liberal feminist cunt. <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> what a, you know, that's yeah. my opinion. But when you're doing this, like looking out in the crowd and seeing all the different races and calling them their slurs, yeah. please understand that you're doing Lisa Lampanelli from 2007 and you're not original. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Please know that. Yeah. You are literally ripping another woman. And she'll, yeah. she she did that flagrantly. Uh-huh. I remember reading an article about her when I was in Chicago and thinking like, because she was famous and maybe I saw her on Last Comic Standing or whatever. But she was like, somebody said, why do you do what you do? You attack all these different types of people and races and you come for them on their stereotype. And it, of course, it was a different time, 07. She's literally like, I don't need to say it, but you know, like looking at um, whatever, a uh, I, it doesn't matter S- seeing the race of a person and then saying that stereotype about them. Yeah. Whether it's like having a bunch of babies or whatever. And they said, why do you do it? And she said, for the money. Right. And I was like, I'll never forget that. Yeah. I really wanted a better answer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> I, I, I get it and everything. And now she's like a motivational speaker and doesn't I'm screaming oh. yeah, and doesn't um, do stand up. But like, okay. it's just like the people who are saying like, I'll say whatever I want. And I make fun of everybody. Mm-hmm. It's like, promise that you just promise me that you know you're doing lisa lampanelli from 2000 yeah right that's so right. fucking interesting because it's and been done yeah. and that's the same thing we have any controversy over comics who are like i'm a female comic who i'm the only one who doesn't talk about this this or this i'm like watch anything from the 80s yeah i promise you women have been doing what you're doing longer yeah mm-hmm. so don't act new i remember a couple mm, yeah I so remember it's, a certain it's, comic said that a couple of years ago she was like i'm the only one who doesn't talk about this and i was like okay girl yeah well like yeah. look around yeah. look behind you look in front of you like that's the, i think that's the other thing about <sighs> look we're like i mean i i speak for myself i'm a white woman i'm not like i'm not over here like my life is so hard and the, you know but like i for sure was at the time one of very few people coming up on the scene so i have an idea of what yeah. it felt like to be the one thing on a show that wasn't yeah. like the others there were a lot less it's not boohoo i'm either. just saying i felt that feeling yeah mm-hmm. and when you have that you do develop a muscle which is how am i going to look at this not from just my perspective but let me walk around it yeah that's the key because i can say an observation and someone someone go I don't relate to that at all. Yeah. Right. So it's like to be successful, it is to like, if we're making a joke about this smoothie, we're going to sit here for a while. We're going to taste it. We're going to walk all the way around it. We're going to look under it. We're going to wonder what it was made of, where are the cups from. You're not going to just going to be like, turmeric, that's all I see. Uh-huh. Right. Because it's sort of like, well, person on that side of the cup can't see that it says that. Right. So it's just sort of like, I don't, I guess that's a metaphor for like your job as the comic isn't to do first thought because that's Twitter. Right. right. Your job Go as a comic deeper. is to like right. do what everybody else doesn't see. There's this comic, Nate Jackson. Do you know him? Um, or are uh-uh. you familiar with him? No. 
Okay, he does crowd work. He where he's just like he just sees people and then just like starts going off. But his crowd work is so funny, is yeah. so creative and so funny. It's it's just he's like doing like an improv set where he just he's like assigning someone a character and then creating this <laughs> colorful, rich history that's completely made up for this person and then like relating them to other people he's doing crowd work with. And it's so goofy. And it's that's so cool. And it's so funny. And he is he's joking about every single person in the audience, but it's so creative and it's not like mean spirited. Yeah. So I'll have to look funny. him up. Oh my he's god. So funny. I'll send you some of I'll okay, send you like okay. some of my favorites. They're really funny. Okay. okay. Nate. Nate Jackson. <laughs> Nate Jackson. Wherever you are, Nate. A we're, king are, of we're big fans. Okay, now, should we get what, into rehabs? Yeah, we're going to get into rehab stories. We probably have time for like one. Yeah, sorry, I just talked so much. No, no it's honestly, literally bad. Beth, you're a gift from God, so literally say whatever you want. I love talking about this shit. Sometimes yeah. so, every day. so smart and interesting. Feel free yeah. to edit out anything that was not related to the podcast. No, because can I tell you no. something? We we had, um, do you know Kara Connors? Yes. Okay. Oh my God. We had that queen on here, and I don't think we got through a goddamn story the first time she was on, and, yeah. <laughs> and then we just read it on Patreon. We're like, okay, because we were just like having a gag the whole time. Sometimes okay, it great. literally fucking be like that. It's like or it will be like super heavy in the stories, and then sometimes it's just like we talk most of the time, and then maybe get through two stories. And okay. That's and at okay. the end of the day, it's our podcast. We can at the end of the day, much, yeah, do whatever if you we guys don't like. It, make, fuck off. If we wanted to make paper airplanes out of these stories, we literally would, but we wouldn't. Okay. But um, at the end of the day, neither of us have been to rehab. I assume you haven't yeah, been I was to rehab. Say, I thought I wouldn't. We. T- Text me that I was like, oh, have I? When you sent me, the I look message, like I was I have, like, but I have that. <laughs> no. Well, I, I have you both actually had. Been, <laughs> when she sent when she sent no. that. I actually technically have been to rehab to visit my mom. I've walked into the facility. Cool. I said, okay, this art is bad. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of that. And her roommate was like a younger girl, mm-hmm. and they had two twin beds in the room, Cute. clean as a doll, very clean. Yeah. And then my mom had to go to a book study, so we couldn't hang out for long. And I remember I was really annoyed with that. But, yeah, I bet. And then I got Sonic afterwards, and I said, okay, mom, you can stay there because <laughs> we're eating was good now. For, what was she in there for? Alcohol. For alcohol and severe depression yeah okay screaming okay. i almost yeah. checked myself into a fucking rehab this year for depression well that's good for you to okay. be on top of it at least but yeah, then she, started, she much started watching tiktok and she said never mind i don't need to go i got yeah, it i said you know what i don't it's like too expensive it was, yeah i'll just learn how to deal with it on tiktok well yeah. i'm glad that you didn't have to spend the money but i'm sure yeah. there's other ways that might be less expensive. yeah tiktok tarot but also Ayahuasca. did you yeah, yeah. <laughs> shut up did you guys read maria's bamford yet cheryl Maria's Bamford's book, Cheryl, Join no, Your Cult. I no. There's a pretty good rehab uh, chunk in there that, like, to be honest with you, the reason I thought of it is just like, yeah, it did feel like a waste of her freaking money. Really? Was, well, yeah, she, and she may not have. Um, yeah, I for, I, uh, I'm trying to think about what that one at the time for her was for. It's wild. I think it was just mental health. Yeah, it's wild that there are so many different types not of just. rehab. There's so many different types of rehab. And yeah. also, it can be such a waste of money. Yeah. Going can back to my be. mom, she was in there for a few months, mm-hmm. and then my dad picked her up. Where's the first place they went? Where's the first place they went? Thank the you for asking. Store. Of course. Well, close. A bar, sweetie. Oh, Slurps no. up. That's like with a yeah. lot of people within, like that go to rehab. Then they get out and they're like, all right, time to fucking go do heroin and, and again. My dad didn't tell her that he was doing that. He just like drove her there. And she was like, oh. And then they got drunk. That's so said, fun. That's Did so he fun. need to go to rehab too? Oh, honey, we're still waiting. Okay, but, yeah. okay, okay. When you believe it. Yeah. I've been to like a recovery program, like for trauma. Mm-hmm. Okay. But it, it, the only real thing that would relate to that would be like no phones and yeah. no contact. And Okay, so let's rehab adjacent. Was, okay. Speaking of the person that I was dating that you first were shocked about. Yeah. Oh. So like the a minute I got my phone back, was it was essentially the energy of like, why didn't you text me? And I was kind of like, you knew where I was. Wow, it was just yeah. so much. The energy was not like, how Who are you? Yeah. It's like after a massage, someone being like, how is it in there? Yeah. Oh my are you feeling good? And you said, um, I just got a massage and you undid yeah. it. Yeah. yeah. You just re nodded my back. And, my and that's on go to I'm rehab. sorry that act out was so aggressive for it me. It honestly. That was the best thing I've ever seen. <laughs> Just know that the new hour, that's what that's okay. what Michael's talking and about. That's uh, and that's on a lot of act outs. Yes. Yeah. I love an act out. We do have one called I fucking love rehab. Okay. Do you want to read it? Sure. Okay. okay, I fucking love rehab. <laughs> and that's on I fucking love rehab. And PS, honey, don't read the name. Won't read the name. Yeah. Do yeah. not read the name. Don't we read we the keep name. these little sweeties anonymous. Yeah, of course. Okay. So we have this uh subject title that's already been read. I, I love rehab. rehab. I went twice as a teenager and genuinely think I became addicted to being in a facility where people expect literally nothing of you. Hilarious. Oh. And there's no expectation to accomplish or become anything. You can just exist. It's a little bit of a twisted utopia. 
To this day, I fantasize about institutionalizing myself again. All I want to be is in a room when it's okay to just lay down and stare at the ceiling and be fed jello and rot till I die. <laughs> Cowboy emoji, sound bad. celebrating emoji. Okay. Doesn't, it literally doesn't sound bad. I'm liking the picture that's being painted. This is why people get addicted to jails because they're just like, I, there's discipline. Yeah, and I, love, yeah. I love recidivism being re rebranded as addicted to jails. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Nice. Load off. My facility specialized in eating disorders, but we also had drug issues because why pick a lane? Mm -hmm. yeah. one, in, one inevitable in rehab, at least as a teen, is this kind of trauma competition. The girl who had been through the most and worst is the king of rehab. And if you've been through nothing, you're nothing. Mm -hmm. when, I have something to say about that. Okay. Yeah. When, you're, when you walk through the door on, a, um, on day one, you have to prove yourself. Immediately, you were flooded with, why are you here? What did you do? Jail. Let's see your person. arms. Have you ever died? <laughs> okay. It's a little bit of a sorting hat situation. Gifted, hid, gifted kid, arred by my dad, turned heroin whore. That's Ravenclaw. Okay. This is a nice um, submission this for, is, yeah. um, what's that one? It would have been a fun joke if I could remember the name of it. <laughs> Wait, were you going to say psych word? No. Um, it's like an online oh. essay. Uh, Mick. Okay. Okay. Who cares? Wait, it like, would have been a good joke. I get joke, what you're trying to say. And I'm sorry to this person, but I'm just saying you could submit this is what I'm saying. It's mm -hmm. a nice sample. Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah. Sorry to interrupt. <laughs> so it's a sorting hat situation. Mm -hmm. Gifted kid, art by my dad turned heroin whore. That's Ravenclaw. Good girl who smokes weed, but her parents are cul-de-sac Christians and terrified she's invited the devil in and have enough money to send her to rehab. That's oh, Gryffindor. Gryffindor, yes. Yeah. Yeah. There was one and only one girl there for overeating. Mm -hmm. We'll call her Susie. Okay. And she felt really left out because everyone like was like starved and coked or heroined out. And to be fair, we absolutely excluded her because we were bitches. Yeah. And she was fat and had no trauma. But also to our credit, she was incredibly fucking annoying. Mm. <laughs> These so, are not my words. This is wild. Okay, okay, okay. Wild. Okay, there's more. In one group therapy okay. session, a girl, Rachel, opened up about finding her dad dead from suicide okay. and was flooded with support and attention. The next day, Susie, who had been here for two weeks already, or weeks already, suddenly opened up about finding her brother hanging from the ceiling. After the session, the girls started being more forgiving of her grading presence because we had identified a root cause. We felt bad. Do we think she it's was true? in now? Yeah. 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 Each day in group, she would talk more and more about this experience and how it was how it has affected every aspect of her life and personality. Susie and Rachel became close, dare I say, best friends. Oh. What's a whole happen? month later. We are in group. Susie's crying, side-eyeing her therapist. She confesses that she fabricated the entire story. There it is. There it is. There it is. There there it is. is. Creative queen. She doesn't even have a fucking brother. Wow. Okay, it's giving salt burn. This is crazy. Rachel loses her shit, of course. Wow. We're all stunned, and Susie is back to being shunned and totally iced out, and this time it was justified. Yeah. If you're going to be that annoying of a person, you absolutely should at least have had to find your brother hanging from a ceiling. Oh that is God. so wild. Two days later, oh. Susie comes to group bald. Rachel isn't there. She's been kicked out for putting Nair in Susie's shampoo <gasps> bottle. A classic. Props to Rachel, honestly, is what that person said at the end. Okay. Thin. Whoa. Or thin. Whoa. Wow. There's a lot going on there. Okay. I mean, I would be addicted to rehab too if that is I mean, okay, drama. Getting, can you imagine? That's great. Well, a drama. There, there's a, a reality show, Celebrity Rehab. That's a fucking, there, that's a fucking reality that is show. That isn't the Nair thing. Have the you heard Nair? of the Nair thing? Oh, yeah. Oh, yes. yeah. Yeah. Okay. I saw it in Gossip Girl many oh, years okay, ago. Okay. Okay. Loved it. It's funny how, okay, because like I experienced this in the rooms of AA where it's like when I got sober and started going when, and then started going to AA, it's like you hear people's stories and you're like, Oh, like I'm not that bad, and you feel this pressure to like be yeah. like, well, I, I have also done terrible things, but like, you know, it's you feel like you don't belong mm -hmm. if you yeah. like didn't get drunk and then shoot heroin into your asshole, right? Because <laughs> that's a lot of it, you know. Or like, mm -hmm. I was homeless and then I like fucked all yeah. these people and killed my mom, and now I'm sober, and you're like, yeah. oh, I just used to cry and 
right. do coke with my boyfriend. Mm, my who boyfriend who didn't like boyfriend. me. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like drove drunk and that was that. Yeah. <laughs> and got away with it. Yeah, and then it, there is that thing. People in the room is being like, because you'll hear people being like, I don't actually think she's an alcoholic. And you're like, they, it's a weird, you really have people. Have I've heard that? people talk like that about other people where they're like, I don't think she's an alcoholic. And it's the craziest Interesting. thing. Interesting. Like, I haven't heard that before. It's yeah. like, what are these worlds where there's like Meanwhile, a hierarchy? I'm not even in AA being like, that's an alcoholic. That's an yes, alcoholic. That's honey. An alcoholic. And see, it's, that's um, that's everyone. Uh, that's I'm, an Al-Anon. Yes, yeah. I'm an Al-Anon. Okay. Are you Al-Anon? Yeah. Honey. Are we supposed to say that? I don't know. I, I love saying it. <laughs> yeah. I'm so not anonymous about any of it. No, me either. I'll like take pictures like in the meeting like, with my t- friends. Yeah. yeah. And tag it. Hashtag al Yeah. And I'll tag yeah. like the address and I'll be like, come on down Tuesdays, 7 p.m. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who cares? I, I do it all the time. Just, it is yeah. helpful. But yeah. I am I mean, I, I'm i doing my best to not be calling everyone alcoholic, but it's... It's hard. Honestly, it's, like, it's kind of fun. Help. It's when you start like learning the language too of like you know like attachment styles and stuff, and you start like prescribing everybody different things, and you're like they're they're uh, love to psychoanalyze. Yeah, you yeah. love to psychoanalyze. Psycho- Secure attachment, Secure attach- An- okay. anxious attachment, anxious, anxious avoidant, and like- that's why she drinks. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> right. it's the mother wound. Why okay. do we all talk like we all talk like we like, have degrees in psychology? Oh yeah, and it's literally, literally just us like, retards, like on TikTok bouncing I around. Think it's, yeah. I think it's TikTok and yeah. Instagram for sure. Mm-hmm. And most and of me- the time. Meanwhile, we have like people getting caught for like fake sign language. So I'm sure a lot of that is not real. <laughs> so not I know. fake sign. That was such a funny fucking the fake video. Sign oh language was like, my god. We're all so just that. assuming that that person really does sign. Yeah. Yeah. Like of course. I think why, that's why what everybody's doing that? with their psychoanalysis. Yeah. You read one TikTok or read it. No, but that, that <laughs> watch like, it. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say. If someone's like, okay, I read this article and it's like, bitch, you watched that. Yeah, you yeah. watched that, and it was a 19 year old, and she gave it to you it's raw. It's so on TikTok, funny. So don't. I, I think about that all the time. We're all watch things, and it's just like, did you know that that that? And I watch it, and I'm like, oh my god, I didn't know that. <laughs> and then you tell somebody, and they're like, where did you hear this? And you're like, well, a 19 year old said it on TikTok, but like, it has to be true. Like that's how, like that's how information is getting passed along now, which is so wild. On the phone with my brother, literally yesterday, he's like oh what books are you reading right now and that's none of his fucking business so you want to know what i said i said oh i'm actually reading the people's history of america it's like it's really fucked up okay yeah. now beth guess what i'm doing sweetheart there's a girl who's reading, reading it Harry on Potter. tiktok and yeah. well i and no and so on the side i'm reading i'm reading every single thing sarah j moss has ever uh, written so don't worry about that it's like fairy porn and then on tiktok there's this girl who's going through chapter by chapter the the, the and she reads it and so i go how many TikToks is that? That's like a five thousand TikToks. Seventy eight right now. Sorry about that, but so <laughs> so much. And so I how, how is she not getting him. in trouble for copyright infringement by reading that? Well, no, because she's not? she's like going through. She's like, you guys, like, guess what happened? Guess oh. what he journaled about in here? Okay, Columbus okay. did this to the Native Americans. Like, da 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 da. Okay, so it's and, sort and of I'm like a drunk history esque take but more Fun. less drunk and more less factual. drunk, more serious, more. There's there's anger behind these reads. Okay, and so I'm like. Oh wow! But People I've been taking it. So creative on social media. I know. I'm reading. Um. So you've been publicly shamed. Oh, what's that? This book? Wait, no, no. What I'm is trying that? to get through Julia Fox's right now. Is it good? John good. Ronson. So you've been publicly shamed. No, because I'm taking and a you, picture. You recommend? I would. I highly recommend. Okay. It's old. Okay. My friend Ennis um recommended to me. We got to meet up and talk about it. But okay, it cute. is interesting in the sense of what we were just talking about, which is public shaming. Twitter, the kangaroo court of it all, what it means, fact checking. Cause like what used to like, spoiler alert, but not really. Cause this is nonfiction. Um, one of the people shamed in this book is Jonah and I don't want to s- pronounce it wrong, but I think it's Lair, uh, who's a journalist and he's basically publicly shamed and loses his career. I mean, he was still hired for like a speaking engagement for 20 grand after it, but, um, yeah for plagiarism and like not fact checking mm-hmm. which like in the realm of journalism is like it's you're, you're supposed to hold yourself it's almost like in the realm of like i'm taking an oath as mm-hmm. a journalist to fact check my work and and cite things and source and you can tell how seriously he takes it just by reading his book but it is interesting because that really doesn't matter to a lot of people anymore yeah right and it's been a slow degradation but right over the last Seven, ten years. This and is it's, part of the it, reason why my dad quit being a journalist. Both right. my parents used to be um, journalists, and they were just like, it's so corrupt now. I, I bet. Especially like, with like how almost all the papers are owned by yeah. like, corporations right. or like, you know, I rich mean, people. I right. dated like, a, one of my bagel shop boyfriends back in 08, 
like was a photographer on film. And I mean, I remember when I put Instagram on my phone and he was like mad because he was just like, that's not you're ruining the integrity. Share, that's how you share photos. Wow. Yeah, I mean, it was yeah. not like we still dated, but it yeah. was just like it was like. What are you doing? That's what it feels like almost like with stand up now too, with like just the fucking pumping out of the clips. Like yeah. when that first started, all of us were like, this isn't what it is. Yeah. It, and I've had people send me stuff on TikTok, even just friends from from home in the Midwest, like, this sounds like your bit, like from a random girl on TikTok. And it's like, sure, it's possible she could have like digested something of mine, mm-hmm. but like I also think there there is shared thought and there is also yeah. just like at the rate that everyone yeah, is doing it now exactly it's it's kind of tough to it, even me sometimes i wonder like if i haven't watched all like if you ha- i haven't been able to or watched all of the women who came up in the 80s and 90s like we'd be fools to think yeah. that people aren't doing some of their bits by mistake absolutely mm-hmm. i had a bit that um that this is, of course a joke about like sucking dick and everybody <laughs> I'm the first woman to do it and Trailblazer. everybody was like when it went online everybody was like you stole this from robin williams blah 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 and i had never seen the robin williams bit about it so then i looked it up and i was like oh okay well i see like they're similar you know yeah. like with the act out and the premise but I, it's just that thing of like the right. shared thought. The shared thought, and then you have to defend yourself to some extent. But yeah. also, it's like, yeah. well, I know I didn't steal that because uh, I never watched it. I'd never. It's like somebody yeah. getting old days of at midnight people, the, during the hashtag wars. Like mm-hmm. if you were on the show that day and then later wanted to play along more, mm-hmm. like to get off some of the ones that you didn't say verbally on the television show, people would be like, "You stole that from," and then like Mike D four five five, and I'm like. And in what world would I know Mike D and find right. his profile? I, mean, I get that it's attached to the hashtag, but I'm not searching the hashtag yeah. to then steal cherry pick and then post. Yeah, no, no, It's no. so funny how we like There's are only obsessed so many with combos. finger pointing and being like, you did it. Like, you didn't come up with it. Blah, 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 blah. Like, people love to just try. It's so weird. But meanwhile, yeah. on TikTok, they literally will see um, tweets and then people will, they won't even say like, oh, I found this on Twitter. They will just like recreate it as their own. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow. It's the thing. It's like the trending thing of like, we all do it now, of like stealing yeah. like a trend and then like remaking our own. I, s- I mean, I saw a comic that I that I know who we also were talking about before um, the recording started that uh, did a did a joke on TikTok and Instagram of an older comic that we that we all know. Yeah. And it's like, I don't think it was I'm not saying it was malicious, but. It's like that guy's not the older comics just not on TikTok to say like, oh wait, that's mine. Right. Then, right. The comic ended up taking it down, but um No shit. So they like really they yeah. Wow. But it's like a, it, it was a known comic who just one hundred percent would never be on TikTok. Right. Sometimes people have good ideas and you go, I kinda wanna do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you go, totally. Yeah. You know, it's they say Shakespeare wrote like all of the premises, and ever since then we've just been like remaking, regurgitating them in different ways. Yeah. Yeah. So okay, I guess fuck. We'll we'll, I'll do one, you do one, and we'll call it a day. Yeah, because I have a short one. Okay, we'll end on the short one. Mm -hmm. My rehab story. You can't make this shit up. The severed skunk tail. Okay, that's already that already a nightmare. Pisses me off, but I went. Uh, okay. I just hit my seven years and six months sober yesterday and I've been reflecting a lot. Yeah. Congratulations. Amazing. Let's see. I went to rehab for heroin addiction, Damn. but was in the detox unit and rehab with people addicted to all sorts of substances, mainly alcohol. I went to rehab a couple of months after turning 21 and overdosing on my 21st birthday and spending the entire week of my birthday in the hospital. And Hey, is it a 21st birthday if you're not ODing? I don't know. <laughs> I was one of the youngest people in my de- in my detox and rehab, but I started so young that by the time I was 21 and after watching so many people I love died a drug overdose and nearly losing everything, including my life, I needed to change my life into something worth living. My first night in the detox unit, I was wheeled in a wheelchair, vomiting neon dope sick bile over the side. I wow. couldn't walk or even hold my own body up because I went into detox already dope sick. This is like making me just like feel sick reading this it just sounds such like that such a fucking nightmare that's rough that's what yeah and by the way when i said whoa to heroin i meant like good for you for for having seven years not like that i'm shocked that you did heroin it's <laughs> no because don't, and don't worry because it doesn't matter what the prompt is it, it could be like best birthday parties or 
a, the comfiest couch you've ever sat on. Someone's going to be like, yeah, the comfiest couch I ever sat on was filled with heroin. Like yeah. Yeah. They're, they're always going to work it in this time. It's like really appropriate, but that's just why we, we're not phased by heroin anymore. Like heroin meth. We're like, come on, sweetie. Yeah. But because that is really amazing that they were able to kick it. it yeah. Did, I can't imagine because I wanted to remember everything and never repeat it. A lot of people go in still high. So they get tapered down. Mm. Um, they get so they get tapered down, medicated, and don't feel their detox as heavily. I made sure I felt everything. Honestly, smart though. Like I like that because she's like, I don't want to fucking. I'm not doing like, this again. Let me go through hell so like I just know. Yeah. As self deprecating as that sounds, it worked for me. Anyway, the night nurses were not very caring or attentive, and my first night I was so sick I somehow crawled out of bed. I was so sick they didn't put me in a room. They didn't put me with a roommate until a few days later. And was crawling down the hallway begging for help. That's so scary. Yeah, that sucks. A kind and patient who became my friend took care of me that night instead of the nurses and saved me from aspirating on my own vomit. Yeesh. I hope he's somewhere doing better too. Oh, and my first night there, I was too sick to notice, but a female patient crawled into a male patient's room and raped him in his sleep. Oh, wouldn't you believe it? Okay. And it was a whole melodrama the next morning as she was getting kicked out. That sucks. That's fucking dark as shit. Yeah. Jesus Christ. After two weeks of harrowing and haunted time in the medical detox unit, I was weighed in at 90 pounds. Okay. Oh. I came in at 80 pounds, at 80 something pounds. Okay. Okay. Dummy thick. Okay. Wow. <laughs> and I was a total mess. And my Suboxone tapered down was, uh, tapered was down to a minimal dosage. So they medically cleared me to move into the inpatient rehab and out of the medical detox unit. My roommate was a 40-year-old blonde housewife who started with prescription pills and ended up making her husband smoke dope off of foil in their Newport Beach kitchen together, LMAO. Okay. My rehab was in Orange County, by the way, uh, even though I'm a San Diego girl because that was the only one with a medical detox unit that was taking patients. You have to be waitlisted for medical detox beds to open. Anyway, her husband would sneak us in cartons of cigarettes that we'd secretly stash in our room because we had asked permission to get one cigarette every few hours from the nurses at this locked up desk before going out to smoke. My roommate was wild and would yell at her husband anytime he came to visit, any came he time to visit, but she did look out for me. Okay. The story that most people love from my rehab stay was there was this one inpatient, a 50 something year old woman who was a self-proclaimed alcoholic, but only ever shared about <laughs> drinking beer and smoking weed. Not to invalidate anyone's experience, that's what we were just talking about, but I was in there for nearly killing myself on heroin, ketamine, and Xanax, and any other downer I could get, but I digress. See, here's the hierarchy of this shit is so funny. Uh, The woman definitely had underlying mental issues and would go by a different name and corresponding color every day. For example, one day her name would be Polly and she would be blue. And another and another day she'd be Christy and she'd be yellow. I mostly knew her as Polly and was one of the only people who would kindly converse with her or sit next to her at meetings. So I like that she was like dragging her for only smoking weed and being out and like drinking. But then you hear this and you're like, well, this bitch is clearly demented. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Doesn't really matter. Yeah, what she was, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's, she's, going, she's, she's on off another, the deep end either way. She's on so. another planet. One day I was smoking a cigarette surrounded by other inpatients in between meetings and therapy shit they scheduled us for every day. She came up to me with a bright pink large wrapped present with a sparkly bow. She said, I have a present for you. Alarm bells went off immediately. I'm scared. And I just said, thank you. But she insisted I open it there in front of her because Mm -hmm. the present was so special. She made it for me. No. She wanted to see me open it. Mm. I slowly... I started slowly opening the layers of pink gift wrapping paper, dot, 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 layer after layer, no. and everyone's eyes were on me as she grinned and watched. I'm scared. I, I don't know. Like to take guesses? Because I think it's her poop. Do you think so? <laughs> yeah. Like There's pictures sh- included in this. I think it's shit. No. Okay. Do you think it's poop? Okay. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Maybe. maybe. I kind of hope it's poop. Yeah. I pulled out. Okay. I pulled the last layer of gift wrapping off and a severed dripping skunk tail fell into my hands. Of course. That's the title. Because that's the title, babe. And you want to know what? Of course. Beth, I wish it was poop. <laughs> and and I, I, I hate I, poop. Like I, That's like the thing about me is like that everyone needs to understand. Like before you know anything else about me, I hate poop. I hate everything about it. And- I still was wishing. I quite literally fucking hate this. I hope it was. I, I hope it was a dead skunk when she found it. I hope she did not 
sever a live skunk's tail. Also, what was it dripping in? What the fuck was going on? Blood? Like, I don't know. Okay, Ew. yeah, this is this is horrible. Okay. When you cut smiling. something with a knife, the cut I know not her grinning while this is this is horrible. When you cut something with a knife, the cut is clean usually, but the severed skunk tail was jagged ah! and an unclean and it off? unclean of like a cut. This. Oh my god, like she broke it. Yes. And still dripping blood and some other odious smell and liquid that began dripping down my arms into my gloves. I hate this. I literally hate this. I was in rehab over Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas, so it was so cal cold for me. She kept asking, do you like it? Yeah, I hate her. My new oh, my teaching. God. Yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah, well, like she's a rabbit inquisitive. Foot. Like, yeah, she's it's like, oh, it's a lucky skunk tail. Do you like it? Okay, that's, that's like cool. Some, I think that's like when you're getting harassed and you're just sort of like, I do. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You just go. Mm-hmm. This would. This is horrible. This is horrible. I sat there frozen with a severed skunk tail in my hands. This woman lived in the rehab with us for months now, and we're not allowed to leave or go outside unless with supervision during a slim window during the daytime hours. So she must have somehow snuck out during the night, caught a skunk with her bare hands, and either killed it or ripped its tail off. I don't know which came first. Okay. I hate this. I hate this. I hate this. And I cannot deal with any no, kind of No, because I would actually rather stories. do heroin and eat poop than ever I, have to literally, deal with this. This is horrible. My homie who took care of me the first night in rehab helped me discreetly throw it away. Stop. Not I, like. Why don't you? I'm. This is the time to be a narc. This no, because actually. Like, this you woman, just go, hi, this woman I mean, just gave me a tail. She you know, the poly- killed an animal and brought it in here. That's a narc. But no, you guys, because if we're comparing this to jail, there's all types of politics. You don't want to be the fucking snitch of the group. It's true. But okay. it, doesn't everybody want old skunky's tail out? You have to kind of yeah, big dick her. You have to go find a different fucking animal. Don't and then that, you have don't. to like put like a fucking moose head on yourself don't. and like charge her like a fucking ram. Don't. Throw your pubes out, cut it into a pelt. I like that yes. they had to discreetly, she had to throw it away discreetly, like to not maybe like rile her up yeah this is like prison style okay so i had to discreetly throw away the tail and gift wrapping and clean myself up after that so i didn't get in trouble so you didn't get in trouble to this day i don't know if she was trying to get me in trouble or actually give me a present i did wear bone jewelry that i made myself so maybe that's what her gave the idea of this gesture okay regardless she was gone a few days later and no one knows what happened to her or where she went i hope she went to fucking hell i hope she went to hell and never came well back. i don't know i don't know because now she's rocking around looking like the damn flintstones and now she's like <laughs> wondering why this girl's like making her an offering she probably looked like the leader of the rehab and the skunk Ugh, girl was this. like oh my god yeah, i need possible. to make a sacrifice i truly fucking hate this well I see. it is very yellow jackets it's it, like, is. it is it is very yellow jackets Uh, i could go into depth about every day of the four months i spent living in rehab and trying to get clean mostly i remember the one and only person who came to visit me being my mom i remember the joy and horror of getting my period back after finally weighing enough to have one again Mm -hmm. i remember the joy of doing yoga and moving my body with strength and intention for the first time in years that's i like that and i remember how fucking hard it was to get clean and stay clean and stop making excuses or feeling sorry for myself and just handling my shit I'm sorry this was so long. Thank you guys for taking for talking about sobriety and self accountability and trying to do better and better. I walked this earth suffering for so many years and I'm still shocked I've made it this far. I'm grateful for all the pain and the progress I've made. My life is now unrecognizable to my life during addiction. I attached some photos from my addiction and me now. Love you, honks. Thanks for being such solid humans. We're all just trying to do our best. It's lovely. Okay, that was that really was a and very sweet. sweet you're but very fu- hot. You're so hot. Again. Yeah, she's literally this hot. This bitch is hot as hell. But how funny would it be if she was dressed up as a skunk? <laughs> there's a skunk tattoo. Yeah, there's, there's, a sk- there's a big skunk. She's literally so hot. That's just kind no. Of- she's literally gorgeous. She is wow. hot, and she needs a skunk tattoo. She yeah. literally does. Okay, so welcome. I'm glad that you survived. No skunk tattoo. Don't actually go. No, why- no, no. I don't know why I can't say skunk tattoo. Skunk. Yeah, that's a horrible. Tattoo. That's fucking horrible. I don't get the part of her maybe getting in trouble, but I I also don't know why the kids didn't just call the cops after they ran over that guy and don't, you know, I know what you did last summer. So yeah, right. you know, I'm but again, not a cop caller myself for personal issues. And that's on a cab. <laughs> well, because sometimes but, if you're like reporting things from what I've heard, even like they're just gonna blame you for causing the trouble, okay. or it could easily get blamed back on you, mm-hmm. or like they're like, oh, like you're the one that's always complaining. Like okay. we don't really know what's going on. And we don't. So know just the throw away the yeah. tail. It's best to just fly under the radar. And we yeah. don't know if this woman was on. like so crazy if she would have like reacted in a weird way. Yeah, yeah she was. Because if crazy. she's doing that unprovoked, y'all don't want to go snitch on the skunk girl because no. clearly she just 
she just murked a skunk. Yeah. yeah well, and it, where'd what, she get the gift wrapping from? Like this bitch is crafty. Yeah, it's weird. Exactly. Cause like the skunk tail is the least of my concerns. It's how she went about it. It's, it's the, it's the packaging. It's the smiling and looking at her like, and saying it's do you for like you. It. Kind of yeah. big dicking her, like yeah. do something. It's like, you know what? Actually, I'm just going to accept the gift and quietly throw it away. Yeah. You know what? I'm just going to handle this like a bottom so and I'm just going to throw it away <laughs> and fly real low. I truly hated that. And I am truly grateful that you're sober and love that yeah that's really that but here's what it is i'm not gonna read this because i feel like we're just gonna end on that because that yeah, we end on that okay we'll end on that we're literally 66 minutes we'll go over to patreon and that's that for today you guys we'll see you on beth, Patreon. thank you so much for joining us happy to literally be literally go find beth watch her specials beth stelling and don't call her a fucking call. lesbian <laughs> how about don't that call her yeah <laughs> call me whatever you want okay <laughs> but I have to pee so bad. Okay, see you guys okay, on literally. Patreon. Love you. Bye. <laughs> so then you guys-